the most classic, the most quintessential, the epitome of Highland Scotch. Very specifically, we ask people, not for your favorite, yeah. necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Just, what do you think is the most indicative of what that category is all about right now? And those people were like, why are you talking to me? This is a bus station. <laughs> and I, oh. Grass is in the community of a Magnificent Bastards and they weighed in. Uh, so the first one, Deanston 12. I like this yes. because I used this in my quintessential representation of Highland Scotch on my tour of Scotland. Okay. And Deanston 12 has that really brilliant bourbon cast classic yeah. Highland. Mm -hmm. The peat is just pepper. And there's this honeysuckle note. That's the front yeah. leading note for me. You put your nose in that thing, and that is like that oh. fresh, clean right? honeysuckle. I'm not sure. Is honeysuckle super regional? Is that something that most people are gonna have a reference point for? Think of it as you get close with jasmine, but not quite there. Yeah, it's it's floral, it's mm -hmm. fresh, it's it's uh, nature and greenery. And Deanston lived in my head as an underrated. Oh yeah but it's number five on the list. It's so maybe five. it's not as underrated as I thought. Uh, there's that little zing, and it does have that sort of slightly funky malt forward note. Mixed with the juice from a very sugared up hmm? fruit cocktail. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know the like fruit the cocktail, can. the syrup, <laughs> yeah. I did not realize, this is 46.3%. Mm -hmm. Why do I keep remembering it, this being, oh, it's, 40, un, it's unappreciated, it's gonna be proof to the floor, but it's actually really good if you give it a chance. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I don't have a clear understanding of how much people yeah. recognize this is a really nice whiskey. It's very good. Yeah. All right, next up on the list is a very different direction. Yes. Because it goes into sherry cask instead of mm. so sherry cask forward. Yes, this is gonna be like your dark, if I remember correctly, your dark, figgy, fruity types of things, yeah? Yeah, your, this is what happens when children come to your door and demand figgy pudding. You just pour them in Dalmore. <laughs> yeah, here children. So a lot of people don't really enjoy the Dalmore because you get into like the E150 conversation. Mm -hmm. I think they do add some, some coloring. But I really enjoy the flavors on this. Me too. Yeah, and what's interesting is trying to find that meaty, that meaty sitter, the epitome of the category, mm -hmm. these are actually pretty different. So people's interpretation of what is Highland Scotch. It's was it sherry or is it bourbon cask? I think yeah, yeah. you're gonna see that happen quite a bit on these back and forth mm -hmm. because there, we do that two more times. Okay. Oh, there it, it is. is. nice though. Slightly sulfur, dark fruit, plum. Then there's an almost earthy note. You're getting much more heavier flavors than me. I'm, I'm still in like this fruity, yeah, stewed like plums and um, mm -hmm. yeah. This, Dates. this was for me, I discovered this at a whiskey festival and then yeah. I drank it straight as like one of the only things I drank for like three months afterwards. Oh yeah. So soft on the palate. There it is. Dude, Fig Newtons, man. Mm-hmm. You Absolutely Fig Newtons. Fig Newtons. Yeah. Wow. I love I love Dalmore. Yeah. The fact that real snobs in the Scottish world mm. shit on them for food for the coloring makes me kind of love them even more. <laughs> Out of spite. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You and I both understand the mm. E150, uh, the annoyance because it's not done for us. Mm -mm. It's done for all the people in the mass market who are making judgment calls based on is it a pretty bottle? Right. And is it an interesting, good, dark, rich looking color? If they see something that's a light color, like a lot of scotch is naturally very right. light. Then we'll they're gonna pass, second. they're gonna pass. So they're doing it, not for us. For and, it's a, and it's for the mass consumer. And it's, I, if, if you're given the option, I would prefer they not do the coloring to darken this a little bit. But, but does it taste good in a glass? Yes. I like it, I like yes, the hell out of it. And I, for me, it presents a lot more flavors than what it should be giving me at 40% alcohol. I know. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. This is super tasty, super convenient meal kits delivered right to your door. The thing with HelloFresh though, I have used this somewhere between 40 and 50 times in my own house. So I'm just gonna get directly to the point Yes, this is the big one. They are super tasty. And I think that the best thing that they do by far, it sounds weird, the seasoning. That is on point. But it's the kind of quality that if I got it in a restaurant, that I would be like, oh yeah, this is great. But we're making it in our house. And I say we, I mean my wife. No, 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 but I helped her uh, twice. And then the other thing they say in here, which I will agree with, saves time. So all of the time that my wife, again, uh, all the time that she's been going to the grocery store and getting all the ingredients, they have everything conveniently uh, prepackaged for you with the amounts that you need so you can create, again, it's like restaurant quality stuff. The biggest thing for me, and this is not from HelloFresh, this is coming from me. Since we've been eating a lot more at home, I've lost 11 pounds 
with no changes. I don't exercise. Look at me. That's not a thing that's going to ever happen. HelloFresh is not trying to do healthy lifestyle stuff at all. They just want it to be delicious. But the end result for me is a lot less fast food. And I ended up losing and keeping off 11 pounds. You go to HelloFresh.com slash WhiskeyTribe14 and use code WhiskeyTribe14 for up to 14 free meals and three free. Holy hell. Is that a real thing? 14 free meals and three free gifts? Damn. <laughs> so right, number three on the list yes. is one of my favorites, Oban 14. Why Oban? What do you like about it? Because it, it is that brilliant balance mm -hmm. of brine okay. and salt and a little bit of smoke, but also orange zest yeah. and honey. It really crosses all of these and it hints at the islands, mm -hmm. even though it's a technically a mainland of the- So you're talking about this tiniest little bit of saltiness mm -hmm. in there. Now take a sip and that's when the salt shows up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Like a salted caramel. Yeah. Okay, and this is gonna be a low proof too, but it's a 43%. Mm -hmm. I wish it wasn't quite so tame and soft because mm -hmm. the flavors that are in there are begging to give me some more drama. That really hits on all of the classic Highland cylinders though, okay, right? So I mean, it's got all the fruit notes. Which is the entirely point of the episode. Yeah. In your mind, what are the classic Highland cylinders? C citrus. Okay. Some kind of fruit. In, mm -hmm. this, in this case, it's citrus as opposed to dark fruit from the sherry cask. Right. That sort of malt forward uh, earthy tone, uh, maybe a little bit of a zest from either peat or like that briny type note. Yeah. And then the classic honey that's not dominatingly sugared. Okay. But it's definitely there. So I'm gonna throw you a curveball. All right. Get it out of here. <laughs> All right. With number two is a curveball for you. So here, no, here's the I'm throwing you the curveball. Oh, okay. Because here's the thing: Highland Scotch. Yeah. And Speyside Scotch. Mm -hmm. Whiskey is always weird and futzy and confusing because tradition. Speyside is a Highland. Is a subregion in Highland. Right. Right. So but Speyside could be both. But it's very often referred to as a different category. Right. You have the Speyside region in the Highland region. Mm -hmm. They're spoke of as, they, as if they're just distinct regions very, very often, but there's tons of overlap. So what do you see as like the heart of Highland versus the heart of Speyside? I think the heart of Speyside, if I had to pick only one thing, and this yeah. is such a generalization and open for preferences. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is Sweet. a classic quintessential the epitome. Sweet of the versus hefty. So I think that they have a lot of the same overlap in notes, right. but there's an underlying sweet thread to a lot of Sides, and right. there's an underlying sort of meaty weight Right. to a lot of the highlands. Okay. But I mean, you find outliers in both. But this so, is a weird one. We're about to go slightly left right now. Hold on though, because voted up, Glenfiddich 12. Yeah, but it was a space But side. that was a space side. So here's yeah. the thing, like it is technically in Highland. Mm -hmm. There's already a separate episode for the most classic space side scotches. So we're gonna link that right in y'all if you wanna see the space sides. So we're going past the Glenfiddich. Yep. yep. But that ranked very highly. Technically you're right, but we're focusing just on Highland, not space side. Now here's a weird left curve. Yeah. Highland Park ended up in this. Highland Park is on or the Orkney the or Islands. Yes, the islands. Yeah. Awful. But technically the islands aren't their own region. Now in some maps, they'll be called a sixth region of Scottish whiskey. Yeah. But generally speaking, they're wrapped into Highland whiskey. So like right. Talisker okay. and uh, Ledgig right. and uh, and then Highland Park. Right. These are all islands right. whiskeys, but they're off they're all lumped into the Highland category. So now I think that's fine. Should we allow it? We allow it. Because I really want to drink some Highland Park. Yeah, because Lafroy <laughs> and because I mean, Isla really is its own standard, right? Okay. But what you're gonna find in here is that it hits on all of the things that I just described that I prefer in right. a Highland malt. This is the sherry direction. Yeah. It's a little more peat and a little more smoke. Yeah. Not enough to be that briny, hefty Ardbeg or right, right, right. Lafroy. No, 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 or, it's a balancing act between right. like your sweeter things, you got the saltiness in there. You mentioned a sulfur note. Yes, the sherry cask, dark fruit Yeah, this note. Light, it's not overwhelming. It's sulfur, you hear like, like, oh God, who wants that? But it's the tiny little thread of it to keep things kind of mixed up and interesting. This is adding a little bit of smoke and salt to the Dalmore. That's what it is. It's okay. the sherry cask, yeah. but with a little more salt and smoke. Whew. We'll see. Let's get into it. Mmm. It's nice though. It's just really good. It's nice. Very often if you get into a, a scotch and you want smoky, it's going to be very heavy handed. Yeah, not this. But there's a few bottlings out there that do a beautiful balancing act of giving you enough smoke to be recognizable. Like it's present. It's a factor. And this is but still going. But it leaves plenty of room 
for other flavors to show up, some sweeter flavors, the maltiness that's in there. I can't decide if that's more of a fruity element or a floral element that's coming through with that smoke. I think it's fruit. But it is nice, and once again, I can tell this is gonna be a low proof. And that smoke lingers. 43%, 43, AB, yeah. 43 ABV. All right, Yeah. Okay. now so, it's time to go back into the square middle, and I think this one that we're about to do yes. belongs right at the top. It's Glen Morangy, yeah. the original, yep. which is a bourbon cask. When I pour it, you're gonna see, what did I say were my quintessentials? Citrus, yes. a light fruit, yes. uh, and then a honey thread, but there's heft and body, it's not just sweet. If I smelled this, and it was a space size, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be butthurt about it. No, but there's a little more weight to it. And ironically, this is a Highland whiskey, right? This is honey and This citrus. ended up on our space side list when we did that vote, and yeah. we had to pull it because like, no, guys, I know you think that's right, space right, side, right. but it's Highland. I get it, it's all very jumbled yeah. together, but all right. Ooh, oh yeah, much more of the creaminess that I was yeah. than I was expecting. But it still has weight and body. It's not just sugar. It's not just sweetness. Yeah. It's, it's it's peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and then like a citrus kind of yep. thin layer over the top. Welcome to number Damn, one, Glenn Morangy. It's super good. I think that probably is a very good meaty center. Classic, quintessential Highland Scotch. I think yeah, yeah that's, that's fair. Oh, hey Daniel, we have uh, hats on the merch store now. It's dad hats because we're dads. Oh, there we, there go. we go. Oh look at that. You want to go fly fishing? I do. Uh, can we? Crowded Barrel Whiskey what? Tribe. I have sacred numbers on the back. The DSP baby. Mine just says Whiskey Tribe. In time for the holidays. Okay, so we have the result for the classic, the quintessential, the Glen Morangy. Now let's do a little project for the Magnificent Bastards in the Whiskey Tribe. We've done flavor clouds before. These are collectively. What are all the flavors, the, the tasting notes, the things that you experience in any given whiskey? This time, we're gonna make a flavor cloud for what most people are experiencing in, obviously, Glamorangy. So there's a link in the description below for you to put in what are the top five biggest flavors that you experience in Glamorangy. We're gonna be doing a few of these because we got like a, we got a thing we wanna do. We got a thing that's gonna unveil here in a little bit. We got a thing, it's a thing. You like things? Next, it's the end of dry week. So if you joined us in an intentional week of abstaining from alcohol this quarter, you can put your name on the list of quarterly challengers. That link's in the description below. We got new merch. Go to the Whiskey Tribe store and do the new merch. What was the other thing though? No, what the hell, Peter? What the hell? What are you doing? It was a perfect thing. No cuts, no edits, Peter. Actually, can you tell me what was on the bottom of that? Just, uh, yeah, it was, it really helped me out. I think it, this is going very well. Stop, you don't talk. <laughs> Figure out what you do. You had all summer, think of it. <laughs>